Good morning, everyone. If we haven't met before, my name is Ryan, and I am so glad that you have joined us for the Commons Kids service today. Like usual, we have lots of fun things planned for you today. Go over to our YouTube channel and check out what fun activities Ashley has for us. She always has a super cool craft and a draw with me. And in these draw with me's, you get to learn how to draw a cool critter and you might even learn a thing or two about them in the process. We also have a Bible story for you today. And today's Bible story is all about knowing God. In fact, throughout the month of November, we are going to explore stories in the Bible that teach us a little bit more about God. And you know what? The Bible is basically a big book of stories that teach us something about God. And in today's story, we are going to be learning about brothers. And if you've been with us for the past few weeks, we have been talking about Jacob and Esau. These are two brothers. But today, we are going to be talking about 12 brothers. That is a lot of brothers. In fact, these brothers were all the sons of Jacob that you will remember from our story last week. This is a story with a lot of ups and downs, and it's going to teach us how God can take something that's not so good and turn it into something great. So why don't you join me and let's listen to our Bible story together. All right, everyone. Today, we will be reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And if you have one of these copies at home, why don't you pause the video right now and go run and grab it so we can follow along together. All right, so we will be reading on page 79, a story called The Forgiving Prince. And this is based on Genesis 37 to 46. Here we go. Jacob had 12 sons, but of all of his sons, Joseph was his favorite. One day, Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was made beautiful and rich, all the colors of the rainbow, but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rainbow robes too. Then to make matters worse, Joseph kept on having these special dreams. I dreamed I was the greatest. I was king, Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. Now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers hated him even more now, and they wanted to kill Joseph and his dreams. Oh no. And one day, that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore Joseph's rainbow robe off of him and sold it to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling them that Joseph was dead. That's the end of that dreamer, they thought, but they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it all to make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, though, Things were not looking good for Joseph in Egypt. He was far from home and far from his dad. Then he got blamed for something that he didn't do. And though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown into jail. But God had not left Joseph. One night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a scary dream about thin cows gobbling up fat cows. What on earth did it mean? He didn't know. But Joseph was a dream expert. So Pharaoh sent for him. It means a famine is coming. Joseph explained, there won't be enough food. Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. Now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food and everyone was hungry. God's special family was in danger. If they didn't get food soon, they would all starve. So, Joseph's brother traveled to get more food. They came and knelt before the new prince. But get this, 
His brothers didn't know that this prince was Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were. Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When they saw it was Joseph, his brothers were afraid. They had sinned and they knew it. Now Joseph would certainly punish them. But Joseph looked at his brothers in the eyes and his eyes filled with tears, even though his brothers had hurt them and hated him and wanted him gone. In spite of everything, he just couldn't stop loving them. His heart, which they had broken, filled with love and Joseph forgave them. Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he said. Behind what you were doing and underneath everything that was happening, God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. Joseph didn't punish him. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince. A young prince whose heart would break. Like Joseph, he would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver. And he would be punished even though he'd done nothing wrong. But God would use everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the whole world. The end. Thanks so much for being such a good listener for today's Bible story you a couple questions about this story. First of all, what color was the coat that Joseph's father Jacob gave to him? If you said rainbow colored, you are right. Second question, what country did Joseph get sent to? That's right, Egypt. And third question, what did Joseph do when his brothers came to him and asked for food? That's right. He welcomed them and gave them everything they needed. What an amazing response. I love how this story tells us so much about God's love for us. God has a plan for our lives. Even when things seem kind of dark, God can take bad things and make them new again and make them good. So, that's it for our Bible story today. Let's pray together. Loving God, we love how you are full of surprises and how you take situations that might look bad and turn them into something good. I pray that today we would learn that you are always with us and that there is a purpose to our lives. And I pray this would be something that we remember for a long time. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you here next week.